Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today I'm doing an update on this pulse motor. And it is the one as in the previous video with the transformer on the output that gave a certain maximum load and where you can use the output of the transformer any way you like without putting any more load on the system. And back here I have now the circuitry for coil shorting, a small 9 volt battery to drive it. Over here I have a rotor with 18 poles, 18 magnets, because my rotor over here is an 18 pole rotor. I have a hall switch over here. It is now in a place where I get the best possible output. Uh, in the previous video I was driving it on 22 volts at 750 milliamps and now uh, um, I haven't touched the DC to DC converter uh, it is running around 950 milliamps and at around 21.5 with the coil shorting without the coil shorting it will run at 750 at 22 but with the call shorting it's putting more drag on the load more drag on the system or more load on the system it is running at 21.5 at 950 milliamps uh, I have now on the output five LEDs light car lights one watch each I am now bypassing the whole system the whole call shorting system if I give this now a spin by hand, just like this, let me put it out, just by hand, do I have any output? Nope, now I'm going to stop it, going to engage the call shorting circuitry, like that, disconnected now, and I'm going to do the same by hand. And you can already see the lights coming on and it's pretty very low maybe not even 100 100 rpm and still the lights are coming on that's a good thing of course shorting at higher speed the effect uh, isn't that good I might say a little bit better but the draw Sorry, the load on the system is much more. So, call shorting in my case seems to be uh, best to work at a uh, very low RPM system. Anyway, I'm gonna switch it on. I'm driving it with a load on it because if I should drive it without the load and then engage the uh, call shorting circuitry I will blow out these two, uh, those two uh, high voltage MOSFET because they are rated at 500 volt a, uh, maximum and my volt output on that part of the system is around 900 so no so I have to run it like this As you can see, it is the system is really struggling at around 1 amp. Now it's around 950 milliamps. There's the input voltage. And it's running pretty slow. And the reason it is running slow is because of the call uh, shorting system. So once again, in my case, it doesn't seem to help me out, the call shorting puts more drag on the system and the output, even if I have very good output at a low RPM, but at a higher RPM and much more input, the output is uh, crappy. And in the dark, yeah, you can see the other side. But you can see a little bit of flickering in the lights and that's not good and the reason for that is that the rotor is spinning at a very slow rpm 
Now I'm gonna stop the whole system because I don't really want to get shocked by it. Now I'm gonna start the system again but without the coil shorting. As you can see I'm bypassing it. There's the coil shorting circuitry. Not connected now. Just on its own. Like that. Uh, I'm gonna start it one more time. I still have the lights on the output. Normally at this speed with coil shorting they should be on already. This, they are starting to light up. Going for second speed. And without the coil shorting I have a higher RPM. Less input. And uh, almost the same output and lights. So not a gain in this case. At least in my setup. Or the way I'm using it. Uh, the coil shorting system would be good if you run it at a very low RPM. Then maybe, yeah, it will work. Or it can work. As I just shown. Now the input is around 22 volts. Because the system is not being loaded down so much. And around... 700 milliamps with the load and here is the light in the dark the light is better even with these old eyes of mine I can clearly see that and the there is not there is with a little bit of dodge in there uh, the light is not flickering now it is nice and steady light and good for your eyes and better lights much better so yeah this is the last time I'm playing around with the coil shorting because I don't really see a uh, gain or a uh, yeah something positive to use it for unless you have a diesel motor running your generator of course but that's another story system is at 22 um, volts 700 milliamps let me check the RPM right over here RPM is now 588 now I'm gonna stop it again Put on the uh, the coil shorting circuitry. Gonna start it. The sooner I start it by hand, you see the lights coming on already. But that doesn't mean anything unless you have a really slow turning rotor. Coil shorting now is engaged. And by the way, I'm only using the first and second speed, the third speed not using now, because uh, I really need to put a uh, 3 amp meter over here. The overdrive speed is a killer, it really runs pretty fast with that. Let it stabilize. This is around 21.5 volts, 900 milliamps, and the RPM is now 365. Yeah, this climbing a little bit, not much. 367. So that's almost 200 RPM less and the light, yeah, it's pretty crappy now. Nope. No more core shorting for me. Last time the RPM. 
Yeah, 367. Yeah. Around 220 RPM less. So yeah, system off. Let the freewheeling away. Gonna start it. The only thing I can say about this coil shorting is at very low speed like this. You have already a little bit of light. And what kind of speed is this? 83. So around 80 to 90 RPM. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in my case, this is the last time I'm working with the coil shorting. Uh, gonna continue with uh, stuff I really think I have. Uh, I can do something with. Once again, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.